Hello and welcome along and welcome back to Little Norton. Uh, today we're heading down to fields 40 and 41 and we're going to take the plough down there here on the Fent 800 uh, and we're going to get these two fields ploughed using course play so that we can get back up to the farm and uh, we've got a little bit of fertilising to do and I also want to start picking up our harvesters and get them back to the farm as well. So let's get this into here and uh, and see how well this new uh, Cavernalan plough works with the uh, with course play on here. Because uh, it might be a little bit different with this. So we'll unfold it first. Back this up a little bit. There we go. Give ourselves a little bit better view of this. And there we go. So next thing I want to do is bring up course play. Uh, let's go to here. Course generation field 41. Uh, automatic, I think, will do fine. Uh, headlands, I think we should go with three. Headland passes, uh, no, we want to up downs first. Clockwise, we'll bring it back to here. Turn in the corners and generate that course. Looks like we start from this corner as well, which is good. Yep, yeah, right from here. And we've got enough space around the edges of the field that this should be fine. So let's grab this here. Now, what I'm intrigued to see is if it does the whole uh, first first round with this uh, packer out. Let's drive course. And away it goes. And I'm hoping that that is going to be where it thinks it should be and not going around the edge because that would be that looks like that's going around the edge very much so let's bring this up and find out yep that's exactly what that's doing so I'm going to stop that bring it up let's lift that up and actually get it to start from the first point so it's a little too close together to get it to start from the, uh, the first point. So we'll do that now. Get that going. First waypoint. Yeah, you can see it picked up on the uh, on the curve there. So again, we'll start it going again, and it does look like. It's going to do it the other way, and I think that is perfect. There we go. Interestingly, to me, that looks the wrong way around. I think that is going to cause us all sorts of problems. Can I turn this? Let's turn that and see if we can start it from the first waypoint again. Otherwise, all it's going to do is keep plowing over the cultivated bits. Right, and... No, it wants to do it the other way around. That is just weird. Let's see if we have a setting here, a tool for this. Setting, so... No. 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 Covers a line with first waypoint activated. Fuel save option, refuel, waiting time. Turn on field, pathfinding, tool offset horizontal, tool opposite turn direction. Last couple of lanes. No, nope, we seem to be good otherwise. Symmetric lane change, uh, yeah, doesn't seem to do anything. It has no offset i think we want to i think we want to turn this can we turn this and get the offset on the other side and there we go and calculate it to go like that and Drive course. Interesting, that is. So 
my offset is that. So this, I think, is going to not quite work out how I'd hoped. But uh, we'll come back and we'll have a look at it later. Certainly seems like it's just going to end up ploughing everything. Let's head back to the farm. And I don't want to jump in the 720. I want to jump into our little farmer 390 CI. And that is because we want to go and get our solid fertilizer spreader so this is our little spraying tractor on the farm this is the one that we are going to be doing uh, that we're hooking up to the sprayer hooking up to the solid fertilizer and doing all of those kind of jobs with uh, we could have done it with a bigger tractor but I, uh, I quite like the idea of this tractor so just want to make sure am I connected up no I'm not so we want to connect this with now, this is interesting. Manual attach, I've found recently, has started being a little bit more iffy. Right, connect all those up. I think that's everything connected up. Lift that up, and we'll go and grab ourselves some fertilizer. Uh, we need to. We are going to need to do some uh, transport of fertilizer and stuff back. And once we get a little bit more into this, uh, and a little bit deeper into this uh, game save. I think we want to look at doing that and getting uh, getting stuff transported back and and doing bits like that so that we can get ourselves uh, nicely set up. Uh, but for now, let's get up to the shop, get this refilled, uh, and then we can go from there. Made it up to the shop and let's get this opened up and get ourselves. So we can take 3,900 litres. I don't think we're going to need much for now. So we're just going to get a single pallet of solid fertiliser in here. Uh, 2,500 for 2,500 litres. This is by far the best way for us to do this. So we'll buy that. Yes. And buying two of these would be more than a, a, a single thing anyway. So let's just fill this up. There we go. That's full. Close up. Well, not full. It's uh, we've still got, yeah, one and a half uh, thousand litres space in this. But we're not going to need much more than this. So I've filled this up. We're going to head back down to the farm and get this field, uh, get our grass field fertilised, hopefully ready for a cut fairly soon. And the grass field I'm talking about is this one just here at the back of our farm pretty big grass field actually um, I quite like that we've got this here this should allow us to get some uh, early uh, probably early hay bales created uh, it's it's gonna be a first year where I'm trying to create ooh, quite a bit of stuff and uh, to have this grass field here is gonna be really really useful I need to work out exactly what we're gonna do but let's get this uh, quite a long reach on this, which is nice. Uh, but what we want to do is uh, is get this grass field sorted for us. Uh, try and work out whether we want hay or silage or both off of here, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's, it's quite a good field for this. Size is good. We should be able to get three cats out of it. And, uh, and as a result, we will be able to feed the cows, uh, which... Uh, with with the setup we've got on here with the maze plus is going to be quite a uh, difficult well I don't think difficult but it's going to be an interesting thing to do um, I'm work try to work out what is the best ratio and mix for our fields uh, to do this with we're looking at having uh, clover and alfalfa uh, and grass and doing a mix of that uh, once we get those extra uh, crops into this map uh, we'll be able to to take full advantage of that uh, and I'm really looking forward to that I'm really looking forward to getting our teeth into that and then uh, and we're going to try and do some mixing as well so we're going to do carrots on this farm which I've not done before uh, and we're uh, we're going to be doing wheat and barley and uh, no I think we're going to do wheat but not barley on here uh, and we're going to try and get the best mix we can for everything and we're going to do maize as well so we're looking at doing maize silage too so it's going to be a, a proper mix of stuff uh, i can see why this is not an arable field though 
It's really quite an odd shape. Uh, but we're going to go down and uh, get the rest of it fertilized. And then we're going to head back up to the shop and grab our harvesters. Last little spot. Just get this covered out. And that is done. And we've not used that much. Uh, used nearly 500 litres. That will do us very nicely. Uh, and the nice thing about this field is this field has so many gates. It's got one at the top, uh, at the bottom, and, uh, and yeah, at the side here that leads straight back into our yard. Uh, and means we can very, very easily just put this back away. And I need to work out, I, I really need to sort of work out where my spray shed is, I think. Uh, I think we've got more maneuverability. Well, we've got the grass stuff over there. So spray shed is probably going to be over that way, I think. Uh, for now, I'm just going to drop this over here in my uh, in my cedar shed. It's a pretty good place for it. Drop that off. There we go. And let's go park this up. Uh, and then we can go out and grab our harvesters. So we're up at the shop. And let's pop into here. And I did ask a question in my live streams recently. Is exactly uh, what harvesters should we have on here? Should we have Fent or should we go for something uh, different like New Holders and things? And everybody went, keep it Fent. We got a, we got a Fent farm. Let's go Fent. So that's what we're going to do. I found, uh, well, there's a recent Fent harvester that's been released, uh, which is this one, the 9490X. Uh, this is a really nice size harvester. It's uh, got a uh, a 12,500 litre capacity uh, in its tank. And that is going to be really useful for us. Our trailer, I think, takes 28,000. Uh, so, yeah, two full loads off this before we tip. Absolutely perfect. Uh, it's 285,000 basic price. But I want to add 15,000 on it for the GPS Wheels, I don't think it actually costs us anything to switch to the Michelins. Although, if I want to put the tracks on here, it is going to be another 15,000. So, I think we're going to leave it as is and actually go for the wheeled version of it. I'm very aware of how much money we have um, and, and wanting to make sure that we can actually buy some cows after we bought our harvesters. So, let's buy that. 303,000 for that. Which is, uh, yeah, very, very nice. We need a header to go with it. So uh, we're going we're gonna to need a corn header as well. But the header that comes with this is a 51,000 uh, Fent header here. Again, th this can be customized to the uh, the older Fent green. But I, I like the newer one on these. Uh, so we're going to buy that too. And then we need a header trailer for this as well. Because that is a big header. So that header... Where has it gone? That is a 10 meter header. We need a header trailer that will take that. The one thing that always annoys me about these header trailers is you can't actually see how much or what length of header these will take. I don't think the Lagoon 24 will do this. I think we're going to have to go for the Quattro. Uh, we need to go for the Fent. Yeah, Fent Nature Green is the colour we've got. So we're going to buy that as well. Yes. Okay. And that should do us for the harvester. Yeah, there we go. So this is this is not a small combine, but I do like this a lot. This has... So this was released on the Mod Hub uh, earlier this week. Uh, it's got opening doors. Uh, it's... Yeah, it's just a nice harvester, this. Let's start her up. And back it up. And for standard size wheels, these are pretty chunky. In fact, I think we might have put the wide tyres on this by mistake. Just looking at the... If I turn the thresher off, or the bit off, does that fold up? No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's fold this back up again. Attach our cutter and this oh wow this cutter should fit on either trailer. I think I Hope it does because that is a, that is a big header It's nice to have a large combine for once 
uh, on this stuff. There we go. And let's get this onto the header trailer. And hopefully there's enough space. So we'll get it lined up at the back. And hopefully that will give us enough space at the front. Right. Oh, that's too far. Nope, it is on it. There we go. Right, so we want to get this back to our farm and get this parked up. Yeah, the other trailer was definitely going to be too small. That is not on there very straight, unfortunately. Let's connect this up. Right, so there we go. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's on there securely enough. That's the one thing I don't like about these old header trailers uh, on here. Uh, is that they don't automatically load the... Uh, there's no locking script on them. So you can very, very easily lose a header transporting it back with these. But we seem to be okay at the moment. It is on there a little bit wonky. Ooh, car coming. So I'm going to get this back down to my farm. And then we're going to come back... And look at getting a forage harvester. Okay, we're back at the farm. Let's, uh, I think this is going to require using the small tractor for this. So we're going to go and disconnect this at the back. Because I don't want to maneuver this with the combine. Uh, we want to get the combine into the shed first, I think. And then we can just put the header down the side. Yeah, so we get the combine over here, like so. And park it up. And then we'll get the beacons off. We'll head out here and, uh, and yeah, I want to get the header trailer in here as well. But it may not be the easiest thing to do. This tractor should be the one to do it with though. And I found the easiest way to reverse head uh, dolly trailers, in particular, uh, is to do it in cab. So it's one of the things where you always get people saying, oh, I hate dolly trailers. Dolly trailers are the worst. Yet, they're not a huge amount of fun, but you can do them. They are very possible to do. So we're going to get this turned around, get as straight and set up as we can. And then, once I'm in my setup position, what I can do is try and get this reversed in. Yeah, this yard is not that big for a header like this. This dolly trailer is particularly nasty because it's got the rear turning wheels as well. So it turns a lot quicker than you think it's going to. And this is this is why in cab is quite a useful way to do this. Because what you get is a much clearer picture of A, where you are, and B, where the dolly trailer is. And you're able to get a much, much... Now I think, yeah, I am way too much to the left. course at the moment is my right okay that I think should clear the door now whether it clears the wall that is the next trick and sometimes yeah you just have to go forwards in order to go back again but there we go we're through the door and then we go forwards a little bit just to straighten ourselves out make that that bit of reversing a bit easier because otherwise you end up in all sorts of trouble. And we just reverse it into here like this. And this is why I did it with the tractor and not with the combine. Because there's no way I could have done this with the, with, the, uh, with the combine. And then you get your final position and your final manoeuvre. And, and I do realise I come almost all the way back out. But... Now that we are in position, we are able to, to more easily get where we want to be. And we can just send it straight back. Like so. And 
depth perception is not great. So, just trying to see where I am. That will do there. Disconnect that. And there we go. Time to head back up to the shop and grab ourselves a forage harvester. So similar to our combine, we're going fent for our forage harvester as well. Uh, because we have this. This is the fent kat katana, I think it is. Uh, nice little forage harvester, this. Uh, this I can put all sorts of uh, bells and whistles and lights on. I'm not. I'm going to put the GPS on it. Uh, we're going to go with... This. I don't know what the difference between the standard honk and the, the Fent air horn is. Uh, we're going to leave it as standard because this is already pretty expensive. Uh, we're going to go with the 65. We don't need anything more powerful than that. Uh, we're not adding any LED lights uh, or strobes. Uh, it. I don't think... Oh, wow. You can add it all. You can add it all for, for mad. But... It doesn't really do much, I don't think. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm not... I'm not. Uh, well, actually, I wonder if it's for working at night. Uh, we can always upgrade it later. For now, we're just going to go standard with GPS and buy that. I think, yep, 373,000. We're down to 400,000. Now, this is the point at which I start going, ooh, we've got to buy a... a, a uh, carrot harvester at some point and uh, and it's getting a bit tight so we're gonna have to watch things uh, we can borrow money I'm trying to avoid it we'll see if we can uh, make it through without doing uh, without doing that which actually is a good question considering we start off the money we have do you guys want to see a uh, maybe we'll do a, uh, a no loan version on here so we won't. We will avoid having any loans. What do you guys think to that? Uh, do you think that's a good way to go? Uh, right. We so we're gonna grab this next, which is forage harvester headers. Uh, these are the Kemper ones that were available at Agrotechnica. I think I want to get now. These are the ones that have the attachable. Now, if I got these right, these are the ones that they have the attachable uh, wheels on them 390 plus uh we need uh, we're gonna need a lower level one i think uh so that has six meters that has seven and a half meters and that has nine meters i'm gonna go and split the difference and go for the middle one uh at a hundred thousand uh, for this and just get the standard Kemper one and go with that. So we'll buy that. Hopefully our, our harvester should be able to handle that. That goes on. I think these all go on. Yeah, so Jaguar 900. Yeah, doesn't doesn't give me any real indication of, uh, of what these will go on. Uh, so uh, we're going to stick with that. And go and pick this up over here. The red of the camper works well with the fence. So that's good. And this is a very dark fence. Hopefully it can handle the seven and a half meter header. Oh wow, we are nowhere near that. That's uh easiest way to do that actually is just to come in here and connect up like that I want to connect everything up because I want to unfold this and I think these are the ones that detach yeah now this is really cool what I love about these is you have to come to here detach that in fact, I think you manually have to detach that by looks of things. Yeah, there we go. And then your header is usable, which is really cool. I absolutely love that. So let's uh, let's lift our header. Right, and then reattach that. There we go. That's reattached. Fold it all up. Get our beacons on. And 
Yeah, lots of shiny lights on this. Let's get it back to the farm. And uh, that will sort us. And we can go and check on our plow and see how that's doing. And in fact, our Fed 800 has finished the job. So we're just going to park this up in the shed. And once we've done that, we'll go down and check on it. I think we could only really fit these two harvesters in here. In fact, I think it's going to be a case of this one's got to go around here. And it's going to be a case. And, and we're going to have to jog things around a little bit to get the combine out. Let's lower the front. There we go. So, yeah. Yeah. We've got our harvesters are in here. And it's a bit tight. So, I'm going to close that door. And then we'll head up to our fence here. And actually, uh, kudos to it. It has sorted itself out, uh, which is interesting. So let's stop this. Uh, lift the plow up. First, I need to unfold it. I need to... Uh, oh, yes, because we're not lifted up. So let's start here. Uh, we'll clear that off. Pretty much what I expected that to do. Well, not what I expected it to do. I'm really pleased that it has done it uh, and done it well. Uh, we want to do the same here now. And to do that, we're going clockwise round. So we want to end it up in this corner here. Very, very covered in lime, this. And somehow... My door is open. So let's switch over to that. Yeah, this has a whole load of doors and, uh, and windows and things that get opened. And it's working out how to close them. But that's okay. Got a little bit hot. Uh, let's uh, let's generate a new course. We want field 40 this time. Same settings otherwise. Generate field course. And that will start it off next to us here. So we'll bring this round. I'm actually quite impressed with how well that did on that previous field. Sticking onto the field and everything. Right. And... Drive course, which sets our very, very white fent off on its work. But I think we're going to leave that doing its job, uh, which remains that. Uh, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from virtual farmer please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell and i will see you next time goodbye